Tackle the shackles. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Tackle the Shackles, out for live streaming live podcast. This is your host of the most high God. You better tell it like he would tell it. You better tell it like he would tell it. You know, if Jesus was here during this second chance month, he would take us to a passage of scripture that had not even been written yet. And it will go directly to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. If, he, if it had already been written. But at this time that Jesus was there, it, 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 when he was here, it wasn't written. But if he came today, he will quote Luke chapter 4, verse 18. And that passage of scripture says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those who are captive. This is Second Chance Month, and we are going to set the captives free. We're here to set the captives free. I hope that you would join us in doing that. You know we're co-partners in the ministry. You know that we are co-laborers in the ministry, Attack of the Shackles. This is not church as usual. This is unusual church. So what I need you to do, you're coming on right now. I know people like they're trying to get their last bologna sandwich in their mouth, trying to, trying to, you know, whatever, trying to get a last little snack from the dinner table. Uh, hey, hey, get it in so you can get here and then invite, wipe your hands off and then, and then go ahead and invite some other people here tonight. Praise God. Amen. And like we do it, we we're just gonna go ahead and play our, you know, play our intro, and we're going to let those who don't know know what we're all about. Check this out. <laughs> In the U.S., a staggering 2.2 million people are incarcerated. A 500% increase over the past 30 years. One in four prisoners were foster children. One in 28 American children has a parent behind bars. A public defender will routinely have a caseload of more than 100 clients at a time. States spend $2.8 billion annually to incarcerate people for non-criminal rule violations. More than 10% of the incarcerated in the U.S. are veterans, while less than 1% of our citizens serve. More than half are there due to PTSD and substance abuse. Veterans are losing their freedom because of defending ours. Tackle the Shackles, a mega movement to create culture change. Not just inside courtrooms and prisons, but within society. Organizations, activists, and legislators are struggling to pass laws to reform the broken justice and prison systems. This is primarily because the public either doesn't know or doesn't care about the injustices and suffering of those caught up in these systems. The key to success is to make it trendy to be informed and care about our incarcerated citizens. Tackle the Shackles is a national community coalition between athletes, churches, police, service providers, prisons, legislators, and the public to bring about better second chances and reduce recidivism. The coalition also promotes criminal justice and prison reform to ensure fairness in courtrooms, reasonable sentences, and that prison time is rehabilitative instead of punitive. As our country is struggling to find answers to the shackles, 
issues of inequality, racism, and injustice. It is an ideal and critical time to implement the tackles. Real solutions and reform. Tackle the Shackles is the movement to unify our country and educate about the depth of the criminal justice issues as we reveal and implement solutions. Tackle the Shackles. Yeah, that's what up. That's what up. That's what's up. <laughs> Amen. We are tackling some shackles. Now, let me uh, also um, just remind you guys that video has been produced several years ago. And I am glad to tell you that some of those statistics on that video has are not totally accurate. And in particular, the video about those who are incarcerated today is less than 2 million. It's, it's less than 2 million. Thank God. That means more people getting out of prison. Uh, than before. That means re-entry is working. You know, um, someone told me um, some time ago that, well, God told me, and, he, and it wasn't too long ago. Let me put that correctly. He said that prison is not broken. It's fixed. Yes, it's fixed. And I said, Lord, 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 what are we doing if it's already fixed? Trying to fix something that's fixed? And he said, no, you don't understand. It's doing exactly what it has been designed to do. So if you're going to tackle some shackles, what you're going to have to do to, um, to really, you know, reduce recidivism, you got to stop giving customers to the prison. That's how you got to stop. And that happens when they come back out we as a society must be about empowering them and helping them and surrounding them and praying for them and encouraging them and, and being there for them to not go back. That's how you reduce recidivism. That's how you, um, we, you know, the prisons are never going to be closed down. We'll be fooling ourselves. They're going to, the prisons have been here since Jesus time. Uh, and they will, they they may still be here forever until Jesus comes. But I'm gonna tell you, at least what we can do is reduce it from 70. We've already reduced it from 70 percent of the people going back into prison. We have reduced it less than 70 percent. It's now 60 something percent. We're going in the right direction. We are reducing recidivism nationally. We, as the body of Christ, we, as those who are formerly incarcerated, we, as those who are partners and stakeholders and folk who believe in humanizing this system. Now, some of y'all think I'm, you know, I, you know, I'm acting like Malcolm X or some of the glass. I think it's the glasses or something. He must be acting like Malcolm X or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's no, it's not that. I actually have to wear glasses now. I should have been wearing them all the time because my eyes are on the computer all the time. Uh, so, so, but no, what I'm saying is that we as a people, doesn't matter if we're black or white or Hispanic or Asians, the body of Christ must stand in the gap, come on, to help our formerly incarcerated justice involved individuals. I hope you feel me. Uh, and tonight we are going to, to tackle some shackles. We're gonna, you're gonna hear probably mostly from me tonight. We got a guest that is scheduled to come on tonight, uh, but they are not entered the studio and hopefully they will enter the studio and I will be able to bring them on so you can hear their powerful testimony. And meanwhile, we wanna give some shout outs to, what's up, Reverend Rush, Pastor, Pastor Rush, God bless you for coming tonight. Amen. We enjoyed uh, being with you yesterday, uh, you and your wife. Uh, we had a great time in celebrating another one of the pastors. Um, you know, uh, yesterday, the third year, Pastor Barber's third year anniversary. And we enjoyed your presence. Um, and thank you for coming. 
Amen. Amen. I'm going to put you up. There he is, Brother Rush. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. And then we want to give a shout out to uh, Jadea. Jadea, I always mess up your name. I'm sorry. Uh, she is one of our certified life coaches. We bless you this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. We appreciate you. Where's the rest of the crew? Uh, there's some people here tonight. Uh, we got more numbers than people chatting. And uh, I want to encourage you to chat and talk to us tonight. Uh, uh, you know, I want to encourage you to to uh, definitely uh, chat and then re-chat. I, in fact, I want if can we take this moment, this minute, while I'm, I'm giving some shout outs here, uh, to take a moment to repost uh, the link uh, into uh, some of the people's, um, uh, you know, social medias uh, that you have, people that you know, maybe on your messaging, you can uh, reach out and, and uh, encourage people to come out. This is Second Chance Month. This is Second Chance Month, and we want to celebrate this month. We want to celebrate every day uh, about Second Chances. Uh, and so God bless you tonight. We thank you for your presence. Our guest uh, is... Uh, Brother Ian tonight, he's not here tonight. Um, and some of you probably didn't get the reminder email. If you're relying upon that email, you probably didn't get the reminder email. We did send some links out, uh, not some links, but some uh, some text out. Uh, those who are on our list will get that information. But uh, praise be to God. We see it on the screen here. Let's subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, now that's the best way to get your, your notification is to subscribe to the YouTube. And as you subscribe to the YouTube, you will be able to, as soon as we go live, it's going to notify you. Uh, Brother Rush, Brother Rush, tell me, tell me, Brother Rush, um, that service yesterday was, was good, wasn't it? It was long, but good. It was a good service. Amen. Celebrate yesterday. We enjoyed ourselves. Um, praise God. Praise God. All right. Well, listen, we're going to first do some things as we are killing some time before our guests jump on. Um, I'm going to take a pause here for a moment. And uh, let me, I'm going to do something here, just a moment here, to, so I can get a telephone number over to our technician. Here, so he can he can text, make sure we know what what's going on with the guests. I'm gonna put the number in his number in our private chat, so so our our technician can can give a reach out to him, find out what's going on, and what's happening. But meanwhile, I can talk. I can talk. Y'all know I can talk. So we can, we just, we gonna chat a little bit. Let me tell y'all a little bit about uh, what took place this past weekend. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal weekend. Um, actually, it started on this past week, Wednesday, and I went out of town. I was out of town since Sunday morning, and um, we had this. We had the national. Returning Citizens Conference. Oh, what a conference. It was powerful. It had hundreds and hundreds of returning citizens. I mean, we had hundreds of them and we weren't all in prison, praise God. <laughs> there, were, there were folk from all different nationalities, but the returning citizens would have made you proud. I mean, some of the most successful returning citizens. Uh, and we can't even technically call them returning citizens. We would have to call them returned citizens because they got tax returns just like everybody else and they're paying taxes and they're doing well. Praise God. But I, I tell you, I had some um little miracles that's a little song little miracles little miracles and i and i call them small miracles but they were situations that i know that god's hand was 
was in it. I can tell you it started off. It started off in a way that it was a miracle. I tell you this testimony. Uh, when I got when I got to the uh, hotel that they had for me there, and everything took place in the hotel. We didn't have to leave or go anywhere. It was all in the hotel. And when I got there, oh my God. I had everything packed up. I had everything I needed in my suitcase. It was, I, I said, I got to give myself a pat on the back. I did not forget anything until I forgot something. And what I forgot was my uh, personal hygiene bag. Uh, I, I, I failed to put it in my suitcase. And um uh, Man, I thought, wow, man, now I got to cut you a Lyft or Uber to go to CVS and get all these personal hygiene stuff. My, you know, get my S curl stuff. You know, I had to, uh, I would have to get all my toothpaste and toothbrush and razors and all kinds of stuff. And uh, and I and I and I said, man, I I, I shouldn't have forgot. And and what happened was, I just so happened to call one of my friends. There in, in Virginia, where they had the conference, and asked them, do they have a vehicle? They, and we can, and because they, I knew they was coming to the conference, and they would be parking in the hotel area. Come to find out, his wife was at CVS pharmacy. They were, he, they, she was there shopping anyway, and uh, she said, he said, listen, here, take her number. Give her a call and give her the shopping list too. You know, <laughs> and uh, man, I text her. She, she's always, she's always making sure she's got the, the gift of hospitality. I live with them when I, or I stay with them usually when I come there. And she, she so happened to be right at CBS. To God be the glory. She, she was so willing and and uh, to to get a list about 10, 10 things on my list and make sure she took care of that. And I didn't have to go nowhere. Just a small little miracle. Now, some people think, Pastor, you, you can do better than that. I know that's a greater testimony than that, Pastor. Well, no, you, you learn after a while, after you've seen the big things, like God raising people from the dead and in your ministry and cancer being healed and AIDS being healed in your ministry. You learn how to appreciate even the little things. And, uh, and that was just one about four or five little miracles that took place in this national reentry or uh, returning citizens conference. It was amazing. Let me get some more shout outs. We got Stacy on the line. Brother Stacy, what's going on? Amen. He is on an extended vacation. <laughs> I understand you're coming back home. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming tonight. And then we got Brother Keith. Brother Keith, what's going on? Thank you for coming tonight. We appreciate your presence, Brother Keith. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, guys, if you don't chat, I don't know you're there. Amen. The number's there, but the chats are not there. I don't know you're there, but I appreciate you coming. It was great seeing you talking and listening to you this past weekend. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. you. Yeah, we had a good time, man. Wasn't it awesome? It was just a good time in the Lord. Amen. We enjoyed ourselves. We got Sister Leela. Sister Leela, one of our, uh, known each other for many, many, many years. Sister Leela is one of our life coaches as well. Uh, we appreciate your presence, Sister Leela. Uh, her husband, uh, just recently, a month or so ago, Went to be with the Lord, and she is still on fire for the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Look at my little niece out there, my very first niece, Dion Gidry. God bless you. Amen. I love you. She, uh, Dion, is an amazing young lady, y'all. I want y'all to know that. She's amazing. She's got nothing but Jesus in her. And, uh, and I thank God for her and her husband, her family. Uh, she has uh, always been such a loving, caring. She's never lost that. I don't care. She's always been that way. And I love you, Dion. 
I love you, love you. You were, you know, you're my first niece that came to live with me and stay and be there with me uh, when I was coming up, amen, as a young preacher. God bless you. And you just remind me of my daughter, Janae. That's how, that's how Janae reminds me of you since she's younger than you. And uh, God bless you. Thank you for coming tonight. We love you. Uh, also, we're going to give some shout out to Beverly. What's going on, Beverly? Appreciate Beverly is a kingdom woman. Amen. She definitely is a kingdom woman. She ain't, you know, she got a church she goes to, but she always come to support the reentry church that we have. We appreciate you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for coming and being supportive tonight uh, on Tackle the Shackles. Amen. Uh, and then we got, uh, of course, others that we, we recognize already. We got Brother Glenn um here and uh also we have uh we had uh, judea judea i know I, I don't pronounce it right all the time but amen we bless you we bless you we bless you all right so yeah we had a, a beautiful time i wanted speaking of coaching i got several coaches several um you know re-entry reintegration coaches that are on here tonight and i want to give uh a a little plug right here for our our coaching uh, ministry that we have. And I, and I really believe that it's the coaching ministry that really holds all the resources together. And it helps people, whether they've been to prison and haven't been to prison, to, to participate in this process of change and transformation. Uh, the coaches are the disciples today. The coaches are the ones who are connecting people to resources. The coaches are helping returning citizens to, to make better choices. And we know that returning citizens uh, didn't get in that situation, you know, because they were thinking clearly. Uh, and so, so it just needs, it just needs a shift in our thinking to help us to make better decisions to get better outcomes. So I want to give it just a little plug. You can see it on the screen. We got our next coaching certification coming up this well actually may the 4th this this is second chance month, but we want it may the 4th uh this is where you need to go in order to sign up for the life coaching hey and even now i'm able to pay coaches um now it's gonna you're gonna have to you don't have to get in there and get your training get your certification and stay committed uh, and 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 there are going to be some opportunities for you to, as we have capacity to hire, we're going to hire some people as we get more prisons. Y'all, many of you don't know that we have five prisons that we are uh, contracting with for returning citizens to go in. Returning citizens to go and uh, not, not returning citizens, but the coaches to go in and coach returning citizens uh, and get paid for it getting paid for your passion. That's like, that's it, man. Praise God, man. If I can do this, I'll do this freely. But if they're going to pay me for it too, whoo, that's a game changer. That's a game changer. So we have coaches on the inside that go into the prisons. And obviously, logistically, not all of you could go to the prisons that we have, the five ones that we have contract with. Uh, but you can do some virtual coaching. Uh, we do have uh, the opportunity to do virtual coaching as well. And uh, and so we pay for that that coaching, too. So you want to go to LeeRobbins.com uh, and go under events and sign up for the May 4th, the May 4th uh, coaching certificate. It's on, it's on a Saturday from 10 to 4, 10 to 2, excuse me, and uh, sign up for that. Sign up for that. And I got, if you stay on here long enough, uh, I will I will have a treat for you. If you stay on this, I ain't got nothing but an hour. And our guest don't look like he's going to be able to, he may, he may jump on. It may be a, another small little miracle and jump on. If you stay till the end, I got a a, um, a blessing for you. And, I'm, and I'll, I need you to also encourage others to come on. Go on your Facebook, go on. Uh, other places where you have social media, get your text, 
out and give them the same link that you got to get here. Uh, you give them the same link. Um, and uh, and so I may have, a, I'm definitely going to have a surprise blessing for some of you on here uh, that can take advantage of it. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is second chance month. This is second chance month. People are like, what is second chance month? This is the month that, um, that nationally and locally, even here in Georgia and some of your states, well, nationally, it's a, it's a second chance month. And this is the time that we recognize um, this movement. This is a, this is a mega movement for change uh, where we acknowledge that, that, that we need second chances. We also are encouraging providers and partners and participants to all feel encouraged that, you know, you being recognized and there are many, many programs, maybe in your city or your state, wherever you are, are doing second chance month celebrations. I just came from one, like I said, in Virginia, which was phenomenal. It was, it was really, really cool. And I want to encourage you guys to participate. You learn a lot. You'll learn a lot about reentry. You'll learn a lot about prison, um, reintegration. You'll learn a lot about how to, uh, you know, give second chances to formerly incarcerated justice involved individuals. Amen. Praise God. Uh, I want to do one other thing here uh, as we are waiting on our guests. And don't, and don't look like you may, may not make it, but uh, like I said, if you hang on just a little longer, I do have uh, a treat for you. Um, for those faithful few that's chatting, there are people here tonight, but they're not chatting tonight. So we want to make sure you you, you start chatting. Uh, I, I want to also, while I have this time, uh, just one second, I, I have this time. I, I want to um, promote or uh, just uh, you know remind you guys about my book, uh, Pain Push Me into purpose. I had a I had a paradigm shift. Um, I really I had a paradigm shift today about this. Um, I got to thinking about, you know, some people like to categorize you in having a prison ministry only or, or a re-entry ministry. And they kind of separate themselves from us in that sense that well, I don't have a prison ministry or a re-entry ministry or a reintegration ministry. And I thought, I thought that is that is yes, that's what we do. We do that ministry, but it's more than that. It's bigger than that. And it's really bigger than that. When I looked at that that national re-entry, a uh, national return of citizens conference, I saw a movement take place. And I saw some people who were multimillionaires who were once in prison and now multimillionaires. I've seen some very successful movie makers. And by the way, uh, Kimba, Kimba, if you haven't seen that movie, Kimba, I, mean, I got a chance to meet Kimba. And uh, she's on Netflix and powerful movie. I was absolutely boo-hooing, boo-hooing uh, at that uh watching that 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 uh, viewing of her movie it was a powerful well done excellent movie um very very powerful and uh, i enjoyed it i was didn't hold back any tears thank god it was they had it dark in the place i was slinging i mean everybody was slinging tears all over the place i mean that movie was very powerful powerful uh if you see my facebook i took some pictures with her and, and she she is just so humble and she was a returning citizen and God is using her and have been using her for years uh, uh, and um, you know we exchange books uh, we exchange books but the Lord showed me when I met all these great people there and I'm not hyping it up you know we got some people that's on here that went to that uh, that uh, that that conference we had several people from Georgia that went there and uh, participated in, in the panels. I got a chance to participate in panels and 
speaking at a workshop and all of this, right? And it was pretty cool. We got you to set up a table. I'll tell you something about that later on. But I'm but the Lord gave me a paradigm shift, a heavenly moment, a shift in my thinking. He said, do not pigeonhole yourself to be a prison ministry, not just a prison ministry or a re-entry ministry. Yes, we do all of that. You are not, you're 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 you are a Luke 4 and 18 ministry. Somebody need to look up that scripture and post it in the chat. You are a Luke 4 and 18 ministry. I said, what are you talking about? He said, you have no different ministry than I have. Hmm. I said, you mean this, this was the ministry that you had? He said, yes. And I didn't just have a prison ministry and I didn't just have a re-entry ministry. You are Luke 4 and 18 ministry. I said, oh, let me, let me look, let me, hold up. Let me, I got to read that to you since I got all this time. You don't give a preacher time. You give a preacher time. Lord, it's over. Um, uh, so I'm going to go to uh, Luke. I love this scripture. I always love this passage of scripture, but I didn't, I really did not. Um, I, I always seen myself as, categorized as a prison re-entry ministry. But God says it's bigger than that. The stuff that we're doing, um, you know, the stuff that we're doing is is way more than just a, a, a small um, categorized ministry. I really believe every believer needs to be part of this ministry, whether it's a physical part or spiritual part of this ministry. It's a Luke 4 and 18. In fact, it's the ministry that Jesus had, and it's his itinerary after he came out of the wilderness and overcame the temptations of Satan at the very beginning of his ministry. You got to know it's important. He quoted a passage of scripture from, from the Old Testament, from the Torah. He quoted this, and I'm getting to it. Here it is. You know what it is. You heard it. You heard the preachers talking about it. But I think we preached about it, talked about it, and we don't even know how to live this out in a very practical way. I'm not everybody. I'm not saying everybody. Some most, a lot of people know and understand this. But let me share this way. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of the sight of the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Come on, that's Luke for it. You, God told me, he said, he, he dropped that thing in my spirit, y'all. He said, you got a Luke for it. I said, I said, what is that kind of ministry? He said, that's the ministry I had. That's the ministry I had. He said, you have that kind of ministry. You have a man. I look at all the people I see out there that are experiencing some level of pain, some level of trauma, some level of lack of peace. And, 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 and even it doesn't matter if you've been locked up. There are some people locked up in their minds, in their spirits. Locked up in their emotions to heal the broken heart. Some people are locked up financially. Come on, to preach the gospel to the poor. Some people are locked up in prison. Yes, to set at liberty, to proclaim the liberty of the captives. Some people are locked up again spiritually, right? To proclaim or no, to, to recover the sight of the blind. Some people are spiritually blind. A lot of people are spiritually blind. And, and if we're going to be, we're, we're going to help people to have, uh, be able to see again, not only be safe, we have a little uh, core values. One of our core values in life empowerment is, is to reduce prison recidivism, but to advance the kingdom of God. If we don't, listen, we can reduce recidivism and a bunch of folk can still break hell wide open. We got, amen. This is a ministry for everybody. Come on, somebody. This is a ministry for every believer. 
This is a ministry not just through second chance month. We need better second chances. And, and this is a ministry for every believer to set the captives free. This is a ministry to set at liberty those who are oppressed. There are so many people that are oppressed and depressed. Come on. And they are going through uh, levels of trauma and pain. And that's why I wrote the book. I wrote the book because there are too many people going through pain and they don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to use it to their advantage. They don't know how to help somebody else that have gone through the same pain. And he said, that's the ministry that I have. Jesus said, that's the ministry. Read it right there. That's the first thing he said before he healed one person, before he caused the blind to see, before he caused the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, before he did one miracle, he said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, glory be to God. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Man, the poor need, do you know what's the best message for the poor? That they can have something. Come on, we keep on wanting to be uh, uh, broke, busted, and disgusted. You can't help nobody if you ain't got nothing. So Jesus said, I want, and Jesus said, the poor gonna, gonna be with you always. You know why? Because you're gonna have something. Glory be to God. And you're gonna be able to bless them. Glory be to God. I didn't mean to make this a, a, a sermon, but this is, <laughs> amen, this is what God showed me. And so, and I know why I wrote the book. I wrote the book because there are too many people hurting. There are people hurting in prison, out of prison. There are people hurting in their homes. There are people who are suffering in silence. There are folk right here on this line that, that, that this is a relief for them to come. Glory be to God. Just to come into this meeting tonight is a relief for you. Some of you are challenged with depression. Some of you are going through relationships and you don't know if you're going to make it another moment. Some of you are experiencing prison bars. Not in prison, but you got some invisible prisons and those are the worst ones. We're tackling some shackles tonight. And, 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 and pain can push us into purpose. Listen, if you have not already gotten this book, don't get it because I don't, listen, I, I can, I, I rather you, you know, have this book. Come on, somebody. I'd rather you have this book. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Christian. We appreciate it. Then to suffer that pain. Because in this, I tell you, in this book, I tell you how to leverage pain. I show you how to use it to your advantage. Because I'm raw and real about my own pain. And, and and by me sharing my pain, some of you, the Holy Spirit going to take some of the stuff that I've been through and you're going to be able to see my pain and be delivered from yours. Come on, somebody. Glory be to God. And I didn't know that that, that was my full mission. My full mission. Amen. We're charged to restore and strengthen marriages and families. That's what that's what we got to do. We all have something to alleviate some problem or some pain or some trauma. Or some, that's Jesus's ministry. And we do it in different ways, people of God. Don't be stuck on just having church. Oh, and a lot of times, yeah, church is a hospital. And we need to go. Oh, it's a gas station and we need to go get filled up. Yes, that's true. That's true. But once you get filled up, you got to empty yourself out. Come on. Paul said, I was a I was a drink offering. I poured out. I, I, I kept nothing back from you. Apostle Paul said, I give it in my all. You know, I died. You know, I was full, but I died empty. Come on, somebody. It's important. Come on, that we get out of our, our stupor. Get out of our stuff. Find a way out of it. Tell them, say, just pause. Listen, give me a break. I got to go help somebody else. The best medicine. For your own healing of pain is to help somebody else in pain. 
And do you have to be perfect? Absolutely no. In fact, I'm glad you're not perfect. And God is glad. God, God, there, there ain't news that, to you, to God that you're not perfect. But he wants us with our scars, with our issues. Come on. I know people tell you, oh, you got to get it right before you say anything. Boy, you never get around to saying anything. That's a trick of the devil. That's a trick of the devil. He's got us paralyzed because we don't feel comfortable enough to share our pain with other people because we ain't got, we ain't perfect. That's just one of the tricks of the enemy to stop your ministry, to make you feel guilty, to make you feel ashamed, to make you feel like you don't belong. That's a trick of the enemy. You don't got to be perfect. I'm not going to be perfect. I'm not perfect. And look what God is doing. And with an imperfect person, <laughs> glory be to God, he will have me to identify with other imperfect people. If I had it all together, the big old halo, like you see back then, look like a halo on my head. If I had it all together, ain't nobody going to be listening to me. Because they're going to like it's not achievable. Who can do that? But when I start sharing my pain. Come on, doubt and Thomases. When I show you the hole in my hand, come on, and the piercing in my side. Amen. And then you're going to, that doubt and Thomas is going to believe because of the pain that Jesus went through. Come on. Somebody need to say amen out there because I'm preaching better than you. Some of y'all say, I see some of y'all saying amen. Glory be to God. I'm telling you, I had a shift in my spirit of what I'm supposed to be all about. You know, so far, I'm, I've been doing 40 plus ministry, years in ministry. And you know what? God is still teaching me stuff. He's still showing me stuff. He's still, show, he's still showing me what he wants me to do. Because if he showed it to me all at one time, I would have ran the other direction. <laughs> I've been hanging out, boy, with Puff Daddy, all of them, man. I've been... I've been running out there with the folk in the world. But thanks be to God, he didn't show me everything. He, he gave me a little bit of time what I can handle. <laughs> Amen. If he told me I had to go through cancer. Come on, he told me if I had to go through prison. If he told me that I had to go through drugs and alcohol. If he had told me beforehand that that was going to be the plan that, that, that I would have to navigate through. And he told me that I had to lose all my money at one time to gain it all back. If he told me that, I would have, I would have said, Lord, you're not talking to me. You can't be talking to me. I didn't come this far to go to prison. I just got a master's in divinity. I'm hanging around the, the greatest of the greatest. That's what I'm gonna do, God. But if he told me, man, I, I would have I would have bored it a long time. But I am so glad. Can somebody say amen? I'm so happy that God allowed me to go through the pain and stay on the cross until the manifestation of the purpose of God broke out in my life. And he ain't done yet, praise God. He ain't done yet with your life. He ain't done with you. You ain't finished yet. He ain't finished with you yet. Where you are is not where you're going to be, praise God. He's going to use every ounce of misunderstanding. People misunderstanding you. He's going to use, oh, those financial disasters in your life. He's going to use those relationships that didn't work out in your life. He's going to use those losing the jobs and, and the kids uh, your children may have passed away before you did. They're gonna, he's going to use it all in order to help somebody else comfort those with the comfort of which I have comforted you. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we got jokes in NBA All-Star. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So I want to encourage you. We, I guess we, the Holy Ghost is our guest tonight. He's their guest every every night. But I, I, I guess we're gonna. That means we'll have to probably move him to another time. But uh, because we don't want to, we want to give him more than fifteen minutes to tell his story. Uh, amen. We bless you guys. Amen. Thank you. 
Uh, we got Sister Brian out there. We appreciate your presence. Praise God. We thank you. Timothy out there. NBA All-Star, which is Lawrence, Coach Lawrence, one of my major coaches that are coaching in a couple of the prisons, doing very well. Amen. We got, uh, who else we have? Amen. We got, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just, we've mentioned some of the others. If I haven't mentioned you for a second time, you, you know who you are. Amen. So we bless you. I'm going to tell you, the second chance, my God, we, we own. We own like a neck bone dipped in Texas chili. This is our month. Hallelujah. The second chance month. I'll tell you another little miracle that took place while I was at the uh, the NCC uh, conference there, the National uh, uh, RC, uh, Returning Citizens Conference. Um, you know, it was, it was a beautiful thing that took place. Um, when I first got there, I got there a day early before the conference took place. And uh, I'm going to talk about little miracles that took place on this conference just this weekend. Some people had talked about miracles 20 years ago. I'm talking about something that just happened this weekend. Um, so I came uh, a day early and um, they didn't have my table set up. They didn't have my or they didn't have my the number to my, the, that, that I was supposed to set my table up. And so, you know, I'm. I'm like, well, they don't have a number for me. Uh, I have all these choices. Nobody's there. I'm here early. Thank God. I said, I'm going to put myself in the best spot. Yeah. So I, I wanted to get the best spot. And I got the best spot in the whole, I mean, traffic, traffic coming out, going in. It was most visible spot that you could, you could set up a table. And I set my books up and set the all kind of stuff up in my T-shirts. And I got the best spot. And uh, then found out the next day, well, that was not my spot. I was supposed to have my stuff in. And uh, I said, well, Lord, I, you know, they didn't have my number. I, I'm not trying to act out of order or anything. I, you know, uh, even one of the ladies that was part of the, uh, the, the plan and say, just pick your spot. I picked me a spot. And uh, they said, well, then the next day they found out I was in somebody else's spot. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, now I got to move all my stuff and take it to another table, probably in some obscure area of the conference uh, place and, and, and you know, near the bathroom somewhere. I don't know. I, but, you know, I, I, I was concerned about that. And the Lord fixed it. This is what the Lord did. The Lord, uh, you know, the person that would have had the table that I was at so happened to be one of my partners. One of my partners who partnered with me in providing a re-entry software called The Pocket. Louise, my friend, that was her table. And come to find out that she did not bring any of her materials. <laughs> that means that that table was for me. Hallelujah. And we, she said, I didn't bring any materials. I kind of forgot about that because she had another meeting at another state and she just flew on over and she said, but I got to get, can I put some flyers on the, of course you can put some flyers on the table, your part. And I, and I got to keep that gift and I sold, listen, y'all, I sold all but five or six of my books and I had a big case full of them, sold them all, praise God. And, uh, and, and because I really believe I was in the right place at the right time. I'm telling you, God is doing some things. He's putting you in the right place at the right time. Come on, glory. You said, man, God, when is going to be me? When I'm going to, when I'm going to get my blessing? When am I going to be an overcome? When I'm going to be able to get that kind of favor on my life? Guess what? This is the season that God, my wife had the prophetic word, go to Kim Robbins Ministries uh, in YouTube and she gave a prophetic word about this. She gave a prophetic word about this. The prophetic word was that there will be miracles that take place this year for your lives. Amen. And God saved the best for last. So don't worry. God is getting ready to do this thing in your life. Amen. Amen. See, see, I got confirmation. Keith said, it was absolutely the best spot. 
Amen. That's see, I'm telling you, God's got the best spot for you. Glory be to God. Mm, just keep waiting. Keep being faithful. Keep waking up. Glory be to God. Keep on doing the right thing. And God will give you divine favor. If you're connected to the Luke 4 and 18 ministry, that was his ministry. If you're partnering with him, if the spirit of the Lord is upon you, he's going to put you in the right place at the right time. We're coming down to a little close here. We're going to, uh, amen, put some more uh, things up there, up some 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 chats up there. I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so just uh, overwhelmed with the blessing of God. It's like he said, the Bible said he'll overtake you. I'm seeing in my 59 right now, 59, I'm seeing more miracles, more blessings take place in my life. You know, we are expanding. We're, we have the potential to get 71 prisons. And God has given us a little bit of time. We're taking on two more prisons. They're contracting with us. That means I can hire more people. We got the potential to do 71 prisons. I'm telling you, that's a blessing. Glory be to God. I'll give you, I'll give you one more little miracle before we close out. That took place just this weekend. I ain't talking about 20 years ago. I'm talking about another little miracle that took place uh, in this in this conference. You know, you have to be a giver. You can't just be a, a receiver. You got to be a giver. And we talked about yesterday uh, at the uh, one of the pastors that are connected to us uh, as she was having her anniversary. We 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 said yesterday it's got to be like a 440 relay. You got to be like a the the theme of her program was, you know, um, run this race, run your race, but don't run alone. Very great, great thing. And 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 the Lord gave me a revelation about as I I gave some words of encouragement to her and to the ministry. I told her that, that yeah, it's like the 440 relay. When you run this race, you're not going to run it by yourself. But if, as you are running this race, it's going to be a time, the, the, the baton, where you're going to have to give the baton to somebody else, and they have to receive it. You, and then the next person gives the baton, and then they have to receive it. And then they give the third person the baton, and then they have to receive it. And that, that, that fourth leg, it should be the fastest person that's going to receive the baton. Glory be to God. And they're going to run to win the race. Now, there are some things that we can pull from that. That when you run in a race, you're not going to run it alone. We got that. Number two, when you're running a race, it's always going to be somebody giving and somebody receiving. And you're going to be giving and receiving. If you're going to be a partner in the ministry, you got to be giving and receiving. But I'm, I'm prophetically speaking this to somebody out there. There are some of you that are on the last leg that God has saved us. I believe most all of us are on the last leg. These are the last days. We are the last leg. And God has put us. I'm speaking this to somebody. God has put us on the last leg of the 440 relay because we are the fastest. We are, we are the most innovative. We are the most capable. We are the most able. He has saved the best for last. And he's given it. He's, somebody has passed the baton to us and we get ready to cross the finish line. The Bible says when you run the race, run in such a way. Everybody runs the race. But run in such a way, come on, somebody, to win, to win. Run in such a way to win. And I'm telling you, God is going to cause some of you that is in this reentry space, reintegration space, that's in this prison space, that's in this uh, pain reliever space, that's in this ministry of love. You are a fourth leg runner. And God is getting ready to give you some stuff to give away to win the race. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me give you this. Amen. We got five more minutes. 
And I'm telling you, let me give you this, this last miracle that took place in my life. Not, not the last miracle, but this, this other miracle, There's several miracles, about five of them. I, I can only tell three on this one. Well, let me let me tell let me tell let me tell two more two more that happened this weekend. I'll make this first one, this last one, next to the last one, quick. There was a there was a a, a lady that bought a, a book and well bought a bracelet from us. I was going to buy a bracelet from us, and one of the one of the torn pages. Shout out to Jay. One of the torn pages uh, bracelets that's made out of paper. In fact, uh, it looks like this. Uh, it's a, it's we got different colors and different shapes and they got cross most of them got crosses on them made out of paper from from formerly incarcerated individuals and she was she wanted this bracelet and she said I got the money I don't want you to give it to me for free I got the money and so she she said she was going back to go to a hotel to get the money a hotel room and she left her keys and the bracelet there watch this little miracle uh, and. Uh, and I noticed that and it was time to shut down. Now, this is the at the end of the conference. It's time to shut down. I was put, uh, packing up all my stuff. I, I wanted the people to know that I had her keys and this bracelet. And I gave it to uh, to one of the, the people who were um, who organized the event. And uh, Dr. Ron Garrett, you might he's one of our life coaches. And uh, I was meeting in a side room with another uh, church doing a, a re-entry hub situation with one of my pastors there, uh, Bishop Pierce. Uh, so we were doing some side training there after the meeting. I was tired after the meeting. So I just doing some mission hub stuff, you know, setting up the re-entry program in their church. And uh, man, the lady came back, met somebody, saw somebody in the restroom, said, I lost my keys. I can't find them. And it so happened to be the wife, the same woman that was at the CVS for me that I shared with you, I shared with you guys there, she was in the bathroom with this lady and said, we know my husband got your keys and the bracelet. And she got the key and she was so happy. Thank you so much. But I, I don't know, you know, and but she kept it to herself about she had to pay for that bracelet. <laughs> so the next morning I got up and I had to leave about, what, 4.30, 5 o'clock that morning to catch a plane. She so happened to come down the elevator and don't know why she came down, came down the elevator. I'm waiting in the lobby for the band to go to the airport. And she said, I'm glad that I, and I'm like, whoa, I'm glad that you're here. I got your money. I got your money. And here, and oh, well, praise God. And it was not but $15. I didn't care about no $15, $15 but she was so happy. But the timing of it all was a blessing. The timing of it all was a blessing. A little miracle. And last but not least, we ain't got number one minute on this one. At my table, in that strategic plot spot at that table, when I told you it was a blessed place to have it, I've applied to be at a workshop at one of the ACA's conference, American uh, Corrections Association. It's the, the one that's national. And I was there, and, I, and I've applied for a workshop <laughs> to be. And it was so happened, the uh, the uh, the uh, director, the executive director of that organization came to my table. And he came to my table and I, the only way I knew he was the one, he gave me his card and I seen the logo. And I said, I applied to be at your, at your conference, to take a workshop. And, they, and you, not everybody get access to this. And here I am with the director, the executive director of the whole organization with all of the prison ministries in the country are associated with this, this organization. And here he is right here in front of me. And he said, guess what? He said, I'm the one that signs off on that. You don't have to worry about a thing. Come on to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Favor ain't fair, but it's so fantastic when you got it. Amen. Amen. I, I'm sorry. I preached it all the way through this, this uh, tackle of the chapters tonight. No, I'm not sorry. 
I'm happy that we got this chance together. Maybe God ordained. I believe God ordained for us to have this time together. We didn't have a guest tonight. We will have one next week. But tonight was about small little miracles. Tonight was about shifting, shifting uh, from different paradigm shifts. He will, he will help you to really see why you are in this earth. And he helped me. I had that little shift to realize I didn't just have a prison ministry, a re-entry ministry. We have a kingdom ministry. We have a Luke 4 and 18 ministry. We have a we have Jesus's ministry. You can't get no better than that. We have a Jesus ministry. Luke 4 and 18 is Jesus's ministry. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, come on, to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the broken heart, to set the captives free, to set at liberty, to, to, to begin to speak to the bruised hearted people. That's the ministry of Jesus. And so you tonight, I believe we had a divine appointment tonight to, to be together. And I thank each and every one of you for being here tonight. Whether you came early or late, we appreciate your presence. And we thank you for following Tapco the Shackles. We're gonna strategically and intentionally, I think we're ready to do some strong social media we're, 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 we have just been kind of low keyed and we've just been just floating along and have not been so intentional about going up to social media because we want to get things in order. We've been going uh, a little bit a year and a half, over a year and a half or so, about close to a year and a half. And it's time now. It's time for us to minister uh, to a larger body of people. And this is what I want to ask you to do. Since we understand that this is not just a prison ministry, it's not just a re-entry ministry, it's Jesus's ministry. It's a kingdom ministry. And I want to encourage you to get the word out. Be disciples. Get the word out. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Come on, do it, do it, do it. Let's do this together. I really believe we're going to really make Jesus proud when he comes back. He's going to ask us, what did we do for the least of these? This is a ministry to the least of these who will become the greatest of these. I've watched that happen at the National Returning Citizens Conference. There were some great movie makers. There were some great entrepreneurs, multimillionaires, with the great ministries. People there are once returning citizens holding office once returning citizens becoming officers. We had people there that were uh, preachers of the gospel. Once we're in locked up, but now they're preaching the gospel. We got people who are once, who are um, just, just a plethora of folk there that God said that he's gonna use the least of these to become a grace. Now you don't have to have gone to prison. You don't have to have gone to prison to be the least of these. The poor in spirit. Come on, the brokenhearted. Come on, those who've been through something. Those who've been through the fire. Those who've been through the storms. Glory be to God. Those who've been through divorces. Those who've been on addictions and drugs. Come on, those who are ex-murderers, ex-prostitutes, ex-homosexuals, those who are adulterers, the least of these. And he's going to turn it all around in these last days. And they're not going to believe the lie. They're going to straight, they're going to stand up and speak the truth. And they're going to live the truth and they're going to be the truth. Amen. Amen. And that's you. That's me. That's us. Let's blow this thing up so we can have a greater influence because God wants us to reach the least of these so they can become the greatest of these. I thank you again for coming tonight. Let me pray. Father, I just pray for not only these that are with me, but I pray for those that's yet to come. 
I pray for those who have genuine, authentic, pure hearts who want to serve you in the authenticity of the Holy Ghost. Those who have scars and pains and problems and issues, but yet, Lord God, that you're turning it around for their victories. Because it is in that that people are saved. It is in that that we turn doubting Thomases into believers. And so we love you, Lord. We bless you and we're grateful for you. Grateful for our salvation. Grateful for our blessings in our life. We don't take it for granted. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You have a beautiful evening. We love you. We'll see you next time. This is Tackle the Shackles Out for Life Streaming Live Podcast. This is your host of the most high God.